Welcome to lecture 8. So today we will learn about a very popular classifier called support vector machines and we will particularly focus on the linearly separable classes. So we will also learn about how to formalize the, um, the equations of this classifier and find the optimal parameters to identify our hyperplane, which separates, separates two classes using two different approaches. So the first one is based on the um, maximum margin perceptron, which we have learned about in the previous lecture, in lecture seven. And the second one is basically a logistic regression approach, which uh, we have seen, I guess, in lecture six. So these are two methods that we learned about, but we're going to use them today to define uh, support vector machines. So just a brief recap of what we have seen in the previous lectures. So uh, the first thing that I would like you guys to focus on is um, the linear regression, okay? So linear regression, uh, we have seen it before. Uh, it's easily solvable because it has a closed form solution. Then if you recall, after that, we learned about what we call the, um, the logistic regression. So the logistic regression uh, is based on estimating the parameters uh, W and B for the sigmoid function. So let's... Uh, just, you know, remember this scenario. So we have, we have our data X that is mapped onto the response Y. And we can see that in this case, we can fit a sigmoid function to this data distribution. So this is what we call like logistic regression. And we define basically the loss function right here. So the loss function uh, depends on the two parameters that we want to estimate. Once we find our optimal parameters, it means that we find uh, the best fit to the data. Okay. So the loss function is as usual defined as here, like it's a squared, um, uh, it's a squared distance between our prediction, our res the response by the uh, sigmoid function and the ground truth score that we want to predict for each data sample xi. So this is the data sample and it's in bold because it's a vector, w is a vector, right? It has the same dimensionality as x in the original uh, form, but it is in, and also in its compact form, okay? So here, if you guys remember, the first thing that we need to do uh, when we want to um, optimize, uh, when we want to classify or regress, we need to define a loss function in machine learning. So this is very uh, common, uh, commonly adopted approach. And to do that, the first thing that we need to um, compute is the uh, gradient, right? So the gradient of the uh, loss function with respect to its uh, variables or parameters. And then the next step would be to set the gradient to zero. So if we set the gradient to zero, then we can, we will try to solve directly, which means we will try to find an explicit, um, an explicit definition or um, a formula for our parameter, right? So this is not always feasible, as you can see that, as you can remember before, for the logistic regression, we had a nice explicit form, closed form, we called a closed form solution. When setting, uh, when solving this equation, right? But for the for for the nonlinear logistic regression, when we um, compute the gradient, so this is the gradient. If we set it to zero, you can see it's highly nonlinear and very complex. So our parameter w depends on uh, many uh, on the on the sigmoid function, which is not simple like to compute. Like I mean, simple to compute, but solve is not very straightforward. Right, so 
And here, uh, it's also, it depends on multiplication. So this is very complex. We cannot easily derive or magically derive the W. We cannot explicitly um, uh, write it down. So alternatively, what we can do, we learned about other optimization techniques, which are the gradient descent, the Newton, uh, Newton's method. And then we need to basically use this gradient uh, that we have explicitly uh, uh, written, and then we just simply apply um, a gradient descent approach. So we have initial initialized an initial uh, guess for our uh, w, and then we we just you know um, try to we compute the uh, d the sequence of the parameters how they evolve and to minimize the loss function. Okay, so that's what we've seen before. Now there was a problem with the uh, with the the gradient descent of the original logistic uh, function. It is sensitive to the initial parameters w zero and b zero. So we saw uh, in the previous lecture um, that when we choose different uh, um, initializations of the parameters, we uh, the the gradient might get stuck at a, a local minimum, so it will not roll down towards the, the optimum, and this is not good. So to solve this problem, what we did, we added a, a regularization term. So the regularization term, it allows to smooth the function uh, locally, right? Regularization everywhere. So this, this is like a, a smoothing convex function in we need to add a convex function because this is, you know, a non-convex. So we want to kind of convexify it almost everywhere uh, to make the gradient, uh, you know, like basically the algorithm uh, flows nicely uh, in the direction of the negative the gradient towards the optimum. Okay, so this is a possible solution to kind of uh, circumvent these issues. Right. So the second, just to remind you guys that when we have what we call, this is the L2 norm. So the L2 norm, the squared L2 norm, because we're squaring it here. So the L2 norm is exactly the Euclidean norm of a vector. So this is the, this is the norm of a vector W. And if you remember, if W has two components, so in linear algebra, so this will be equal to w1 squared plus w2 squared, and we take the square root, right? So if we square it, we simply remove, so which means we're square, we're, we're taking the squared L2 norm, we just remove this, okay? And this is exactly the formula that we have right there. Now in the second part, uh, we also saw the, uh, now we're moving from regression to classification. And in the classification, we focused on, uh, we learned about um, the perceptron, right? So that's a basic linear classifier. And what we have, our, and like basically what we want to predict is the label now. So the yi belongs either to minus one or one. So it denotes the class label of each sample xi. So xi is our um, sample, it has all the features, how many features we have here. We have d features, right? And after solving, you know, like after solving this problem, we found that first we can formulate it, like we're, we can formulate it uh, by this um, inequality. So this is basically satisfied for all correctly classified uh, samples xi. So all correctly classified samples, uh, when uh, finding the, the parameters of the plane, okay, so that, or the hyperplane that separates our data points. So these are our data points, right? So once we find the hyperplane, then if the point, each point that is correctly classified should satisfy this inequality. If it's not correctly classified, then it will be, um, it will be positive, okay? So this is, you know, a strictly uh, positive, right? It means that, uh, or equal to zero, both of them. It means that the, the, uh, the point is not correctly classified. So here, this is basically uh, when it's set to zero, it's incorrectly classified, or also if it's positive. So for this case, we um, define what we call the max loss function, so L max. So L max right here, uh, it's uh, it's just you know this uh, 
this uh, curve, so it's a max zero x. The problem with that is, as you guys know this, this uh, function, this max loss or perceptron cost for classifying samples, it has two issues. The first one, it's not uh, differentiable at a zero, at point zero. So here you can look. So it's not smooth at this point, so it's not differentiable. So that causes problems when we want to uh, perform gradient descent. And the second issue is that, um, well, that's the first issue. The second issue is that the uh, it has a trivial solution, which is at zero, zero. So if we want to minimize this, if we take, if we set W, like to zeros, so the vector to zero, and the scalar b to zero, then that would be an obvious solution because we want to maximize uh, zero and you know like all these um, uh, to ma to be we want to minimize this. Remember, we want to minimize this function. So to minimize it, if we take zero zero, that's an obvious uh, trivial solution. So we want to avoid that. So to solve this problem, what we did, we uh, all, we suggested an alternative solution that approximates this curve locally. So it looks like it. So the response uh, would be similar, but it has it is differentiable. So this is what we call the soft the soft uh, max solution. So it's like soft zero x, right? It is uh, differentiable. It's smooth and it has non-trivial solution because at zero the the response of this function is different from zero. Okay, so it's different from zero. Now, after that, it's exactly the same step. So we defined our uh, loss function. So it's a sum over all our training samples of uh, the soft cost. And then our goal is to minimize this loss function. So this is what we call also, um, we call it the logistic regression for classification or the log loss support vector machines. And to predict for a new test sample, right, new um, testing sample x test, so we just, you know, take the transpose of that vector, so we're transposing it um, and multiplying it by our uh, parameter vector w star, adding the bias b star, and we take the sign. So if the sign is positive, then it belongs to the positive class. If it's negative, it belongs to the negative class. Okay. Now, for the, um, so this is, you know, the first part. And the second part, we looked at what we call the margin, the margin perceptron. So the margin perceptron is a very interesting idea. Why is that? So let's look at uh, this case. For example, if we want to classify, let me just zoom more a bit. So if we want to classify these points, there are there is an infinite number of hyperplanes that can separate these two classes. So one of them is this one, okay? But as you guys can see, this solution is not, it might not be very good because the, the distance from these, um, these, the closest points from different classes is very small. So the margin between the two classes is small, right? So, Solving using the uh, soft max or the max perceptron will might lead to a small margin, so we cannot guarantee that we have a very large margin. And this is might this might causes this might cause problems when we want to generalize this to unseen data and test our trained classifier on a new test set. So to solve this problem, what we want to do is basically we want to maximize the distance between these two. So we basically try to identify an optimal, a new optimal uh, hyperplane that also max at the same time it tries to maximize, to, to well classify the points, right? To put the green ones on um, and the, the right side, the orange ones on the left side, but at the same time it aims to um, maximize the margin between these two classes. So we want them to be uh, separable while maximizing maximizing the space between them and this is what we call the uh, margin perceptron okay so the margin perceptron and uh, defining this uh, and uh, step by step basically I walked you through the different steps on how to derive those uh, equations and we defined the max loss it has basically the same problem, it's non-differentiable, so it's non-zero, uh, it, it doesn't have an, um, a trivial solution because we added the one, 
that is derived from the margin. So we want to have a, um, a like we basically translated this plane by uh, minus one and plus one. And however, we see that um, we still what we have is uh, we have right. So it's still non-differentiable. So that's that's a problem. So we uh, instead we use the uh, softmax function on the margin perceptron. So this is a soft margin perceptron loss function to classify the points. And alternatively, we have proposed we propose two solutions. So the first one is a softmax, the second one what we call the squared, well, there's a typo here, squared margin perceptron loss function, okay? Great, so that was the recap of the pre